In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lady was both of the tribe of Judah and the house of David. One of the reasons for the celebration of the Nativity of Our Blessed Lady is not only to mark this great day, but also to point out that she is of the lineage of David because the Messiah had to be of the lineage of David. And it was not sufficient that he be merely legally of David as the adopted son of Joseph, for Joseph was not his true father. But he had to be truly by flesh and blood of the lineage of David the king. And so Our Lady was both of the tribe of Judah and the house of David. Now the tribe of Judah means that she descended from the eldest son of Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac and Isaac was the son of Abraham. And Abraham was chosen by God to found that people who would bring forth the Messiah. So Jacob had twelve sons, and those twelve sons constitute the twelve tribes of Israel. And so the Messiah had to come from the tribe of Judah, the eldest son of Jacob. But Judah had many sons, and there was a great deal of lineage from Judah. It was necessary not only that she be of the tribe of Judah, but also of the house of David. We know that Our Lady was of David's house from sacred scripture. The Pharisees are asked by Christ, whose son is he? Referring to the Messiah. And they answered, David's. And so it is clear by their quick answer that they knew that he must be of the house of David. The children in Jerusalem cry out to him, Hosanna to the son of David. They would not do this unless they knew him to be of the house of David and unless they knew also that the Messiah was of the house of David. The angel says to Mary at the Annunciation, the Lord will give him the throne of David his father. And our Lord himself says, I am the root and the offspring of David. And so this points to the Davidic origin of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is, of course, the royal line. So since it is clear that our Lord is of the house of David, it is equally clear that our Lady was as well. For although Joseph also, as we see in the Gospel, descended from the house of David, he was not his true father. And so it is absolutely necessary that our Lady was also of the house of David. Another interesting aspect about our Lady's ancestry is that she was of the priestly stock This means that she descends from the lineage of the tribe of Levi as well. Part of her lineage is from the tribe of Levi. Now you have to understand that to be a priest in the Old Testament was not the way you were a priest or are a priest in the New Testament. You were born into the priesthood. If you were a member of the tribe of Levi, and descended from Aaron, who was the brother of Moses, and who was the high priest when Moses was alive. You were a priest. And the tribe of Levi could not own any land. But they were to be supported by the other eleven tribes, and the other eleven tribes had to give one-tenth of their belongings, their income, to the tribe of Levi. And that's where the term tithing comes in. 
Tithing means one-tenth. It comes from the Old Testament because the other tribes had to support the priests and their work in the temple by the giving of 10%. So that's a very, very ancient and divinely constituted law, the, the law of tithing. And so she was of the tribe of Levi. She had lineage of the tribe of Levi, which was the priestly stock. And we know this because she was related to St. Elizabeth. And sacred scripture attests to the fact that St. Elizabeth was of the priestly tribe, that she was of the daughters of Aaron, it says it in St. Luke. And she was married to a priest, Zachary. And St. Elizabeth, therefore, was the kinswoman of our Blessed Lady, and therefore our Blessed Lady was of the priestly stock. It is fitting that Our Lady have in her lineage the priestly blood since her son would become the eternal high priest and so our blessed Lord could claim the Levitical priesthood that is the priesthood of the Old Testament because his mother descended from this priesthood and he would change this priesthood into the New Testament priesthood by the shedding of his blood on the cross and by ordaining priests at the Last Supper. Our Our Lady's parents were Saints Joachim and Anne, as you know. It is from tradition, not from anything in sacred scripture, but from tradition that we know that these were the names of her parents. By tradition as well, and a very well-founded tradition, we know that they were renowned for their sanctity. And this confirms the fact that most saints come from pious homes. It is a, a rare exception that one comes from an impious home. And it also reminds us that part of the sanctification of your soul in God's plan is what home you come from. By tradition, we also know that St. Anne was sterile and that the conception of Our Lady was a miraculous disappearance of her sterile state. St. John Damascene says, Why was she born of a sterile woman? Because it was fitting that she who was to be the origin of prodigies should begin by a prodigy and gradually progress from the humblest to the sublime. God always takes a certain delight in humbling human beings for their own good. And the source of all goodness and life, therefore, came from a sterile woman. For our Blessed Lady would give birth to the Christ child who would be the Savior. And so from sterility, from nothing, came the Virgin Mary who would be the mother of grace and of life. She has the sterile womb in common with Isaac, Samuel, and St. John the Baptist. For they were all of sterile parents and for the same reason. By tradition, we also know that the parents of the Virgin Mary were informed by a divine revelation of her conception and of her future dignity. St. Epiphanius and St. John Damascene attest to this. It is also commonly held that the birth of the Virgin Mary did not inflict pain on St. Anne. The pains of childbirth are a punishment for original sin. It is in Genesis. All of the problems of childbirth that women have, the danger of childbirth, uh, all of those things come from original sin. But since our Blessed Lady was without original sin, it was fitting that she should come into this world without any of the pains of original sin 
for St. Anne. Children naturally rejoice in their mother's birthday. It, it is impossible that a child not be happy on, her mother, on his mother's birthday. They somehow know in their own simple way that if their mothers were not there, they would not be there. They rejoice not only for the great day of their mother, but they rejoice for themselves because they know instinctively that they come from their mother. And so we know that if it were not for the Blessed Virgin Mary, there would be no Christ. And if no Christ, then no salvation. The mother of St. Pius X said, looking at his Episcopal ring when he was the Bishop of Mantua, said, that ring would not be on his finger unless my wedding ring were on mine. And so it is true of the Blessed Virgin Mary that in the plan of God, because she had to, because the Messiah had to descend from David and had to assume flesh from flesh, it was necessary that we have the Blessed Virgin Mary. So if we did not have her, we would be orphaned, orphaned in sin and in the effects of sin. And children naturally want to give a gift to their mothers, and so let us give a gift to our Blessed Lady. Because she is the perfection of all holiness, she is obsessed with the honor of her son. The only thing that she cares about whether when, when she was in this life or now glorified in the next, is the honor of her Son, the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so there is no greater gift that you could give to her than to increase the love of her divine Son and particularly in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.